It was Jack Davis, the political consultant's 50th birthday party, and all the local politicos came out in all their pomp and glory. Thousand dollar suits, women in jewels, and black evening gowns. Jack Davis was the campaign manager who had gotten the last two mayors of San Francisco elected. He was in charge of a referendum drive to get a new stadium and shopping mall built for the Niners. Jack made and broke politicians. To incur his wrath was the equivalent of a political death sentence. Every politician in town and half of Sacramento was there. All the supervisors were there. The DA, the sheriff, the mayor. Jack had a reputation as a man of strange tastes, so there were a number of freaky elements dispersed through the crowd at his birthday party. At a table, a tattooist was tattooing someone. A man strolling about in latex shorts had Christmas tree balls and lead fishing weights hanging from hooks dug into his bare chest and back. A woman with a huge tattoo of a many-armed Shiva with multiple penises ejaculating walked by. She had a thick, woolly, Wyatt Earp-style mustache. Nude dancers were gyrating up on stage. But for the most part, the audience was overwhelmingly straight and conservative. Lots of suits and women dressed to the nines. The majority of them were either politicians or media people. Ron was in charge of the entertainment for this affair. So who did he book? This bloodletting performance art band, the United Satanic Apache Front. The show started with a heavy metal guitarist playing headbanger riffs over layers of samples being cooked up on a, synth on a synthesizer. Then Steve Leba, the front man, comes out in some leather mask bondage device. Steve turned away from the audience, and this dominatrix in a black rubber dress walked up and cut a huge pentagram into his back with a knife, making half-inch deep incisions. The blood drips down from the fresh cuts. The dominatrix catches the blood in a tin bowl she holds at the base of his back. Then Steve squats down between the dominatrix's legs. She pulls up her dress, rips open her lace pantyhose, and pisses down his back through the fresh incisions. Once again, the dominatrix catches the urine and blood in the tin bowl she holds at the base of his back. It was about half full by the time she was done. Then Steve stands up, turns to the audience, and drinks the bowl full of urine and blood. All around me, these people in suits were saying things like, Oh, I am definitely not drunk enough for this, or I feel ill. The Republican supervisor just ran straight out of the room. They didn't even get to the Jack, Jack Daniels ritual before the management pulled the plug on them and put on pop disco music. Get down on the floor. I want to boogie, oogie, oogie till I just can't boogie no more. Comes blaring through the speakers while Steve and the band give everybody in the room the finger. The straight-laced politicals try to comatosely dance off their shock. A number of them lurch into a spastic suburban version of the hustle. After about five minutes of bad music and frenzied backstage negotiations, they let Steve go on again. Guess the politicos didn't want to give the impression they were trying to censor anyone. That can be bad for your poll numbers in a place like San Francisco. Steve stands up in front of everyone and says, Alcohol fucked my people, and now you're about to watch alcohol fuck me. Steve takes off his pants. <laughs> Daniel Willis walks up, dressed as Pocahontas in the Disney movie, and proceeds to buttfuck the hell out of him with a strap-on Jack Daniels bottle. Now this was a big bottle of Jack Daniels. It looked like the half-gallon size. She put on a little KY to lube it, but it didn't do anything for the circumference. The lid must have been three or four inches across. Pocahontas was really wailing on his ass with a fierce animalistic fervor. She fucked him so hard the Jack Daniels bottle popped out of the strap-on and was left hanging from his butt. Then Steve pulled the bottle of liquor out of his anus, cracked open the seal, and took a big drink from it. He offered the bottle to the politicians in the front of the crowd. There were no takers. Most of them just ran away in abject horror. Ron, of course, was up front yelling, Careful if you drink from it! There might be one hell of a backwash on that bottle. Later that night, Jack Davis was cutting up birthday cake and serving it to the politicians. Blood from the performance art act had gotten all over the cake, and Jack just cut that cake up and served it to the politicians who ate it down, blood and all.
After the United Satanic Apache Front did their little act, Ron took me through the crowd and introduced me to all of the politicians. He asked each one what they thought of the show. Many were still in shock. The DA could hardly speak. But the sheriff, Mike Hennessy, was different. What did you think of the entertainment, sheriff? Ron asked. Oh, I thought it was great, Hennessy said. See, I used to go to punk rock shows. I'm really into punk. Used to go to the Mabuhe Garden shows back in the 70s and 80s. I saw the Sex Pistols on their first U.S. tour. And the Clash. When reporters from the Chronicle asked the sheriff what he thought of the show, his only comment was, That was a waste of a perfectly good bottle of liquor. At that point, Steve walked up to us. He was still drinking from the huge Jack Daniels bottle he had been fucked up the ass with. Give me a hit off that bottle, Mike said. Steve handed him the Jack. What the hell, Mike commented as he took a big swig. I didn't get hepatitis after I took a drink at our last show. At midnight, Warren Hinkle let ten live pigs loose to run through the crowd. When this party hit the mainstream media on Monday morning, it was the biggest shitstorm of the decade. Front page of the Chronicle coverage for the entire next week. All the local media raged over it for weeks. There was one day that Last Gasp was completely surrounded by TV trucks and cameras, and I was just walking around to all the windows and putting books up in them to give them free advertising. There was a skit about it on, on about the party on Saturday Night Live. This party went viral before there was an internet. Across the country, editorials were written claiming this party was a metaphor for everything that was wrong with politics generally, in San Francisco specifically. It was Ron Turner's greatest prank. It was one of the greatest pranks in all of prankdom. Six months later, I was eating dinner with my mother-in-law back east in the Hamptons when I mentioned I had been at this party and my mother-in-law blew a gasket. How could you go to something like that, she screamed. I read about that party in the New York Times. That party was the downfall of Western civilization. So thanks, Ron, for inviting me to the party that led to the downfall of Western civilization. Mission accomplished. Mm -hmm.